from Mr. Kip Blackshire, who's been a special guest of ours in the past, and that's called As It Falls. And we're really happy to have here on The Upper Room with Joe Kelly and G. DeSoe on WVOF 88.5 in Fairfield, Connecticut. Mr. Kip Blackshire, he's got a new album out, The 11th Hour, and we're here to talk about it. And also, the uh, upcoming CD release party. How you doing, Kip? Pretty good. The 11th Hour. Tell, tell us about, first, first the title, and then... Uh, putting this together and uh, these upcoming uh, days before the performance? Well, the title, The Eleventh Hour, um, comes from a spiritual standpoint. I mean, a lot of us, the uh, Eleventh Hour in some point or some perspective in our life. And uh, if you look at some of the titles of uh, the new album, um, um, Dying of Old Ages, uh, for Example, one of the new songs you'll be hearing, uh, um, a lot of people, you know, say for us as artists, you know, in our careers, you know, we all look for that one big break, you know, to some degree, and a lot of us feel like we're getting a little too old to actually uh, uh, break through that door, you know, or cross that threshold, you know, to actually, you know, make some kind of... Uh, an achievement in life, you know, and what we're trying to do. And so I called the song Dying of Old Age in the 11th hour, you know, and the rest of the album is kind of tailored the same way, you know, um, to basically let people know that there is some kind of a resolution. You just got to kind of stick to your dreams. Well, I know you grew up in the church and everything, and uh, that's been really important, Uh with your family as well, but you know you're still a young cat, and a lot of people in the music business, I'm, I'm sure, haven't reached that point of spiritual awareness. How, how how do you deal with, you know, getting to? It seems like you've been enlightened for a while and everything, but it, it, it's tough to. Is it tough to be around when the, the music business is is a little bit different than that? Yes and no. I mean, um, I have a great support system. Um, and I think, you know, a lot of that, again, stems from, you know, having uh, been brought up in a spiritual family. I mean, and if you don't really, I mean, let me put it like this. I mean, if you don't have faith in what you're doing, then, you know, you may as well try and find something else to do, you know, different. You know, a lot of people say, you know, we uh, live the uh, life of the intangible I mean, but to me, you know, I believe that with God, all things are possible. So, you know, I really don't trip that much, you know. Right. Okay. I see it right now. I mean, but it's just a road. I mean, you know, I mean, you know that you're going to get there. I mean, it's just a matter of time and a matter of when it's going to actually happen. So, you know, I believe if anybody's going to do this and, you know, you say that you have something to give to somebody, you know, uh, you got something that you think that people should hear. You got a message, you know, that you want to deliver. You know, you know your purpose, and you believe in your passion. Then you should stick to it. Kip Blackshire is our special guest, uh, still out in Minneapolis, and uh, been there for for quite a while. His uh, latest CD, The Eleventh Hour. You can go to his website, kipblackshire.com dot com, and and please come out to the Quest uh, this Friday night, yep, August fifth. And uh, t- tell us the location for people who might be coming into town, because I, I saw online people are talking about making road trips out uh, to come see it. So so where where is the Quest located? The actual address, that's a good question. I mean, uh, I think it's located off of uh, Fifth Street, if I'm not mistaken. Um, but you can't miss it. Uh, it's right downtown. Uh, you go ask anybody where the Quest is, they'll point you directly to it. Um, like I said, as far as the physical address of it, I'm really not sure. And they could probably do a search online. It comes right up. So Quest oh, yeah. in, in Minneapolis. Um, you, you've got, of course, a great band. You're, you're a talented musician in your own right. Um, who's going to be playing on stage that night? And I heard the, the Funky Ballhead is going to be making a triumphant return. Yeah. Yeah, I got the Funky Ballheads. Uh, this actually happened uh, during the course of the recording of this new record. Uh, <clears throat> we're in the studio and Kirk Johnson was playing drums, uh, which he's playing uh, on the new record also. And 
uh, his thing is, you know, we're just kind of in the parking lot talking before we actually even loaded in. And I was like, Kirk, you know, man, why don't, you know, you have these bald heads come back and, you know, let's do the release party together, man. Let's just all do it. And first, you know, I guess it was kind of like a joke and until he said, yeah, okay, well, cool. It sounds cool. We should do it. I was like, ah, oh, Kirk, you're not going to do this. And he's like, okay, well, let's just do it then. Let's just put it together and make it work. So, yeah, we got the ball heads coming in and uh, should be a pretty good show. Uh, I don't know if we're going to have um, quite every original member because uh, it's kind of uh, late to get all the guys together, but uh, still going to be a good show. Uh, my band, uh, a lot of the same guys that I've used uh, for over the last year or so, you know, so it's going to be a lot of fun. So, so who's in your band? Who will be on stage that night? Uh, we got uh, Kyle Wood on guitars. Uh, we got uh, Chad Elliott on drums. Serge Aku on bass. And uh, this will be, I guess, uh, one of the first shows in Minneapolis that I've ever uh, played guitars and sang on. I mean, I'm normally just singing, you know, but this will be one of the first shows, you know, that I actually play guitars and sing on. So, so, so you're going to be doing everything. Yeah, I'm gonna be trying to do everything, man. Right, that's cool. Yeah, yeah. So, so we should get into another uh, track, which is on Eleventh Hour, touching and agreeing, and tell us about the uh, recording for this one. This one was recorded live at uh, Paisley Park. Um, did a live DVD shoot out there, and uh, went over pretty well. All right, we'll give a funky kind of lick to it uh, with a nice uh, power chord rock edge to it. Yeah, this is great, great music coming out of the Twin Cities. Kip Blackshire is our special guest here this morning on The Upper Room, and we'll be uh, listening to this live from Paisley Park, touching in the green. We'll come back and speak more once again with Mr. Kip Blackshire. They rock things out in Minnesota, Chanhassen, Minnesota, live at Paisley Park from Kip Blackshire and his stellar band. Kip Blackshire is our special guest, always welcome friend here to The Upper Room and WVOF. And, you know, we were talking off air about paisley park and uh that had some great live shows out there which were you uh were a great participant in prince's band uh you you missed a day's jamming at the park oh yeah oh yeah man it was, it was a lot of fun and a lot of learning you know <laughs> so it's kind of it's kind of something you want to call like the good old days you know right well but you jammed at one of the 3121 parties which sounded real cool <laughs> stevie wonder right oh yeah yeah, what's it like jamming with some of the people that I'm sure, you know, you were able to listen to growing up uh, and you're right sitting there in the living room playing with uh, Stevie and Alicia. Well, Alicia, I mean, uh, I'm talking Stevie having that longevity. Well, I mean, I got to I gotta say it was a great experience. I mean, but, I mean, however, you know, I grew up in a pretty strict, structured kind of a household. You know, I come from four generations of gospel singers and uh, my parents weren't <laughs> allowing me to listen to anyone like Stevie so 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 what's the punishment if you're found with a, with a Stevie Wonder record under your bed oh you don't want to know <laughs> right, right. <laughs> yeah it was pretty severe you know so you know I guess it was the whole thing uh, with them just saying okay well this is how we're gonna do it and we're gonna you know, instilling you the fear of God, you know. So, I mean, you know, it's a, it was a great learning ex experience from that also. So, I mean, when I got here, I mean, a lot of the people that uh, most of us have grown up with, I was just exposed to, you know, through Prince, you know. So, you know, a lot of the Stevie Wonder tunes. I mean, I did a, a recent Stevie Wonder tribute show, and I had to really learn I sang about, I think it was about five or six of his songs, and I had to learn most of them because I'd never heard them before. So it was kind of crazy, you know, but, you know, we pulled it off nice. And a lot of people say, well, oh, man, you got a, a hint of Stevie in you, man. You know, I know you probably grew up listening to that. I'm like, no, I didn't. You know, it was just something recent. So, you know, it was a, it's still a great experience, though, to kind of be able to put two and two together to say, well, wow, you know, this is who people kind of compare me to, and I never really listened to the guy growing up. 
I think one of the uh, songs I really dug that that you've you've been on is is something off of uh, Brown Mark's album. Man, you had a great ballad off of that record. Which one is that one? I, I'm not sure the title, but but uh, it, it, it's a ballad on there. You featured lead vocals. Okay. Oh, yeah. Cryptic. Yeah. Now, yeah. hey, let me ask you. Uh, I mean, you played in Prince's band, of course, as a keyboardist and vocalist, and. And, you know, we're learning his music and, and how we wanted you to be in a band. How about on the flip side now as a band leader yourself, uh, bringing your music in and teaching your band? Uh, how does that go? And, and uh, do you allow freedom for your band members to experiment on stage? It depends. I mean, I learned to be really particular in what I want because... You know, I, I guess the one thing I can say is that, you know, I did learn from Prince is that when you go in there, it's not a democracy, you know. You go in and he gives you the part and you play the part. If he gives you a solo, that's your room to breathe a little bit, you know. I mean, and if we're just jamming on something, then I learned to stay in the pocket. And I kind of try to teach my guys the same thing because if you can play a show and you play it exactly the way that you hear it and the way that you're feeling it, and you know, to me, that's the way that it's supposed to be. I mean, you know, yes, all of us have talent. I mean, but there's this one thing I heard Prince say about Miles Davis is about, you know, appreciating the space, you know, and a lot of guys want to kind of jump in a hole and just want to play with their feeling. And all the time, what you're feeling is not the, the best thing, you know. And for me, I just want to make sure that, you know, that I give the music what it needs, you know, because if I feel like that, that's the case then you know to really carry a lot more so no i mean yes and no i mean i do like my guys to have fun i try to make music that's fun and you know i try to make music that's actually challenging but not so far as to the common listener can't understand you know well a special guest right now if you just tuned in mr kip blackshire kip blackshire's latest album 11th hour which will be featuring uh music uh on our program here the upper room in wvof the CD release party is this Friday, August 5th in the Twin Cities, and that will be uh, over at the Quest. You're, you're playing the Ascot Room, right? Yep. Okay. Now, so what kind of rooms? I, I've never been in the Quest, but tell us about the club over there. What, what do you like so much to choose it as your, you know, the premier place for your CD release party? Well, this setting is a nice little intimate setting. I think it houses about four to 500 people. Uh, <clears throat> central location downtown, I mean, pretty much where everything is kind of happening at. Uh, it's just got a nice, uh, I don't even know how to explain the, the feel of the room, but it's a really cool spot. I mean, you have to come and check it out. It has a nice water fountain in there. Uh, a lot of people have played there, so it's a really well-known spot. Uh, so I think it's going to be a pretty cool place for attracting people to come to. And you've got uh, your own studios now, basement studios, right? Yes. Yeah. Uh, you produce another acts or just working on on your own music in the CD? I've just been working on my own stuff right now. Mm -hmm. Working on my own stuff as uh, enough as is, you know. So um, I used to do other projects. I mean, but nothing any that's really major, you know. But um, I really just buckled down and focused on my own thing. You know, because I used to put my own self on a back burner. And right now I found out that it takes so much more energy and time, you know, to put into myself in order to make it go. So, yeah. Independent uh, recording artist, so, that, you know, you're taking a lot on your shoulders, but I'm sure it's definitely more enjoyable. It is, it is. It's much more fulfilling for me right now. Now, now Kip uh, has been getting a lot of, of course, he's worldwide recognized and, and performing overseas. Recently, you performed in Paris, France, and a few other places in Europe. Uh, what what exactly did you do over there and, and upcoming plans? Uh, what are they? Um, I toured uh, at the Palo Palo with this uh, band called Soul Power in um, uh, Hanover, Germany. That was my first show. A little small, intimate place. Uh, never been there before, but it was really nice. Uh, nice nice funky band uh, we also went to the La Reservoir in Paris France uh, which was a show hooked up by Rafi uh, which yeah we do plan to go back in November uh, last time I was there I was actually under 
management. But uh, I'm sure, you know, some of us know Stephanie Elmer, which she's not managing me anymore. Um, currently, no one is. I mean, it's kind of an experience to try to, you know, do this and and just do it with this kind of freedom like this. I mean, you know, and having learned, you know, what I have learned. And, you know, I mean, it's actually going to be a cool experience. I mean, like I said, I mean, I got a, um, a lot of advisors. I mean, like Mr. Morris Hayes, I'm sure a lot of you know. Uh, I think he's out in Europe right now, right? Yes, I think he's out there with Maceo Parker right now. Mm-hmm. And he was actually responsible for me hooking up with this Soul Power Band and going out to Europe. So, and... It's like planted the seed when we went there the first time. So this time we hope to go back and do a a, a longer tour. So and that's scheduled for like mid to late November. Hopefully I'll be back before the uh, holiday season. And you can. Your mom's. Yeah, and your your mom's still down south. Yes, she is. Right. Arkansas, right? Yeah. Yeah. So so uh, Kip Blackshire, all the information you can get for Kip CD and dates and uh go to his website kipblackshire.com and uh please check out the show this friday night august 5th in minneapolis at the quest the ascot room and uh bring some extra money pick up the uh pick up the the new cd and kips uh i'm sure will be happy and and talk with the people come out to the show come on down that minneapolis funk and gospel rb is going to be kicking pretty strong now, uh, you're talking about being an independent artist and everything. Um, how about as far as radio? I mean, it, it's a lot of work getting it out there, I'm sure, right? That's pretty expensive. Right. You know, I mean, with the, the juggernaut holding, you know, all the cards on you know, Clear Channel, I'm sure everyone, you know, that can be pretty expensive. But, you know, I mean, it's uh, a process process we do what we can do right now and you know i'm like the song willing to do the work so you know i mean it's it's just fun i mean it's fun to actually have the power in your hands and say well you know what you know i'm considered the underdog and this is what i have to do in order to make it work man you know i'm glad to actually have you know the rights to my own masters and be able to control that you know i mean for a while, I mean, I really didn't understand it, you know. I wanted the, the big deal, and, you know, I mean, a lot of people say, well, you know what, even today the major record system is the only way you can really be exposed to the masses, you know, and that's the only way that you're going to really break through and do what you want to do, I mean. But I'm talking about people like Ana DeFranco, which has always been an independent artist, and she sells hundreds of thousands of units, you know. Yeah. Does a lot of concerts. Yeah, it's a lot. Yeah. And now, now, pretty interesting discussion you're talking about now, because uh, you know, of course, you uh, work with uh, one of the best, Prince, who had a different route, went to the major and independent, and now, you know, calls his own shots, but still deals with with major companies on his own terms, I guess. But uh, as an independent artist yourself, starting that way, are there any? I'm sure there are a lot of differences the route Prince went, but uh, what are you what were you using that he taught you on your own music and getting it out there? Well, I mean, now we're talking about someone that knows both sides, you know, both having to deal and both being on your own. I mean, now a lot of people could say, well, it's easy for him to say, I mean, he's been there and done it, and now he can do what he wants to do because he's set. Well, that doesn't necessarily fly. I mean, because you have a name, is, yeah, you do have some privileges that some of us don't have. Uh, But, you know, I think there's a way to uh, present yourself in a way to, you know, in the scheme of things, you know, to, I don't want to say manipulate, but there's a way to actually, you know, um, the Bible says that your gift will make room for you. That's where I'll go with this. And to me, it's like I have a pretty strong gift. I mean, I'm not one to really toot my own whistle or anything like that but I will say that I know what I'm doing and God has blessed me with a voice you know so when I sing you know that I'm heard you know and I'm really thankful for that so I just follow that follow my passion and and you do good things good things will come to you that's the way I see it 
is there an artist out there if they were playing in concert and you had a concert ticket that you would travel cross country to go see anybody come to mind uh wow i mean now we have to go old school again i guess you know uh -huh, right you know i mean a lot of the new acts i mean i hear what i hear you know and i'm cool i mean but nothing that's going to really inspire me to say wow i mean man that's some new stuff or that's something that i haven't heard before or that's gonna like just grab me and make me remember i did a, a recent show with al green um, at the state theater a few months back and i just listened to one of his songs and i was sitting at the back you know the place was packed and i got through opening for him and i went to the back and sat down and i had his song in my head, and I still have it in my head, let's stay together, and I'm just like, wow, that's amazing, I mean, but nowadays, when do you hear something that stays in your head, like, that that, that actually has a message in it, you know, you know, I want to hear somebody talk about something again, you know, something that, you know, penetrates my heart, you know, that actually grabs me, you know, I mean, you know, I remember people talking about music that actually meant something like Earth, Wind, and Fire, we need devotion, you know, I mean, I hate to go you know, old school or, I mean, but it is what it is, you know, mm -hmm. it's what it is. And for me, I mean, I like to hear music that actually has a message. I mean, nowadays it's about the, the beat and the aesthetics of the sound of it, you know, money, you can hear it all in the music now. I mean, and I'm trying to do stuff that it's actually got, you know, some potential of when people leave the room, that they actually got something to talk about now, you know, something that deals with people and they can they can actually connect with on an everyday basis you know so a real humble and, and talented cat kit blackshire has been our special guest here on the upper room with joe kelly and g Dassault and wvof here in connecticut you'll be able to see kip at the quest the ascot room this friday night and that is in minneapolis august 5th what, what time show time seven o'clock when doors open funky ball heads are scheduled to go on at seven thirty. so you'll be playing with them or just yeah uh-huh so it's so a double bill, funky ball heads kick. Kirk Johnson uh, coming out of the Kitchen Record Studios to do some stage time. And, uh, of course, Kip Blackshire will tear it up on stage. And please bring extra money. Support Kip with his latest CD, 11th Hour. And uh, we hope to hope to see you, you know, throughout uh, touring on this record. It should be cool, man. Sounds good. Yeah. Hey, and Kip will be playing guitar as well as keys and, and singing and grooving, dancing, so it should be an outstanding show. Hey, you know what, Kip? We're going to go out with uh, one more from Paisley Park. This is another great one, which uh, it's called Don't Leave. And uh, thanks once again. Thank you. <laughs> 